A man who served time in prison for burglary is in trouble once again, suspected of a rash of break-ins at homes over the weekend in Akron, this time home surveillance cameras and police cameras leading to a quick arrest. Tonight, only on News 5, our Bob Jones has the video from homeowners that helped crack the case. Surveillance video from Jefferson Avenue in Akron shows a man up to no good. And this is mine. And this is mine. Broad and daylight. This is mine. <laughs> Niggas don't do at night no more, huh? Okay. Yo, he got the flash screen. <laughs> Moving with no oh. purpose, low as shit. Surveillance video from Jefferson Avenue in Akron shows a man up to no good on Good Friday. After breaking into a home, he walks out carrying a 65-inch TV and loads it into a car. You feel violated. That TV belonged to Kai Shelton. His fiancée and their kids were not home at the time. If it was just me, I wouldn't feel as violated. But when you got family in the house, it's... Like, wait a second, if somebody broke your house and stole your flat screen and you were single, you wouldn't feel that way. Man, let's be real. Kai was probably like, you know how hard it was for me to steal that fucking TV first? Oh, shit. <laughs> like, it takes it to a whole different level. Police say hours earlier, just a few blocks away on Augusta Avenue, another home surveillance camera captured video of the same man. Again, Yo. walking off. Oh, I, oh I'm going to get this one for the bedroom. <laughs> put this one in the bedroom. <laughs> put this one in the living room. Yo, I went to, I bought, I, I bought a, a flat screen in maybe like two months ago uh, at from Walmart. Because, um, you know, we wanted to get another room in the house so that my wife could hang out with the baby and shit and I have to come all the way downstairs. That shit was a hundred bucks, man. Goddamn, like a 30-inch flat screen was like a hundred bucks, man. The ones that's like 50 and 60 inches is like 250, man. Yeah, I'm doing cheap as hell now. It's just cheap and it's shit. They were so cheap, I almost fell out when I went in there, man. I was like, God damn. Y'all wanted to get the biggest one. I was like, because I'm like, shit, a thousand dollars will get me like a movie screen. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hey, honey, get to a 75. Oh, yeah. No, nah, that is. You get it to 75 inch for like maybe 600, man, at Walmart. <laughs> they can spend the country chances for a hundred dollar TV. Yo, these TVs, these t and then used, these TVs ain't worth that, man. Yeah, After you know, breaking into a home. Looks like he knocks on the door, no one answers, kicks the door, goes in, grabs a TV and leaves. So it all happens in a matter of a couple of minutes. In fact, Captain Christopher Brewer says a serial burglar is suspected of stealing four TVs from homes in that neighborhood. Yo, think about if you home, right, and somebody knock on the door, you the type of person that you don't want to be bothered. You in there, you don't want to be bothered. You're like, oh, fuck, I ain't answering that shit. And his uh, door just fly open. And it's some big ass George Floyd ass fucking yeah, shit. Yeah, what, the, what these fucking people don't understand about this shit because they're always like, oh, it's just a TV. It's not what somebody's like. It's like that motherfucker will kill you for that TV. Oh, uh, really? like, I love you, my TV, more than your life. Yeah, he, he you because you caught him. He, he won't kill you for the TV. He's killing you because now, like, I'm in your home and you got a problem. Yeah. Right. So now it's yeah. like it's it's a fight. Like we got beef now. Like yeah, you know? I said the type you don't understand the type of person to break into a house like that is like they they'll just fucking kick your ass. They don't give a yeah. fuck. You know. You <laughs> stopping me from grabbing this TV? Yeah, that he'll that he'll definitely kill your ass if you if you if you was hey he because he might think you got a gun. Cause you're a homeowner, you might be coming out with a gun. He, he a, man, this dude will body it. Go do, go do his time and come out and steal some more. Yep. Whatever they might not have flat screens when he get out. They might have some new technology, but whatever the technology is, he get out. Like when he went in, he was still in the old box TVs, and now he did his time. Now he back out still the flat screen. Big TV after breaking into a home. It looks like he knocks on the door, no one answers, kicks the door, goes in, grabs a TV and leaves. So it all happens in a matter of a couple of minutes. In fact, Captain yeah. Christopher Brewer says a serial burglar is suspected of stealing four TVs from homes in that neighborhood all on the same day. But those videos proved to be crucial, 
helping police get a license plate and a good look at the suspect's face. I showed the other cop the video footage and shoots of him, and she's like, can you zoom in? Clear as day. You can see his face. Technology is perfect. Investigators entered the license plate into the flock camera system. Police spotted the car, pulled it over, and arrested the suspect, 56-year-old Gordon Matthews. What is Yo, that's just a regular okay. son, man. You see oh, him Robbie. in the street, you, you would never think he was doing that shit. Did you see that road? That used to be a nice area. That fucking road they had was a brick road. Mm. This no, guy right here is dangerous, though. And here's the thing. He's going to get out. Like, they not keeping people for carjackings and assaults. He's definitely getting out the next day. All he did was Hell break yeah. the house and steal. Nobody got hurt. Six year old Gordon Matthews. What does this say about technology? It gives us a lot of information. If nothing else, like in this case, we know which direction the person went so we can start sending cars in the right areas. It turns out Matthews has a history of burglary, serving more than six years of a seven year sentence in prison for that crime. He was released in 2022 on post release control under the supervision of a parole officer. Kai says he's frustrated not by the system but by the suspect. Every day we wake, we wake up and we make choices on what we're going to do. The system can't correct somebody's choice decision making. They have to do that themselves. What happens next to Matthews is once again up to the justice system. As for Kai, he's happy his video helped crack the case. As long as I don't see him have to deal with him and he's not taking advantage of people, then that's my main concern. For now, Matthews is charged with one count of burglary, but he remains a suspect in at least three other cases, and Akron police say more charges are likely. In Akron... A family in Milwaukee is devastated after a mother was shot and killed. It happened this morning near North 18th Street in Hadley. Officials have not released the shooting victim's name, but family have identified her as Lakeisha Timmons. Mary Jo Ola now on how they are remembering. I don't know what happened. I know my mama was left laying on the cold ground. Heartbroken, Latanelia Timmons wants answers to why her mom. Who? What happened? I know my mama was left laying on the cold ground. Heartbroken, Latanelia Timmons wants answers. Latanelia? Is that what they said? Latanelia? This is. Woo! Oh. Oh, what happened? I know my mama was left laying on the cold ground. Heartbroken, Latanelia Timmons wants answers to why her mother was shot and killed around 7.30 Monday morning, just steps away from home. It was senseless. She had babies at home. She just came back from dropping up my sisters off at school. Latanelia. 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 Black people got to stop naming kids, man. <laughs> it's what white people do it first, man. Please. Yeah, man, this shit crazy. Just came back from dropping up my sisters off at school. Latanelia says her mother is Lakeisha Timmons and that she made caring for seven children look easy. All of our friends was her kids. Any kids who needed somewhere to stay, that was her kids. She fed them. She didn't want nothing from nobody. She ain't asked for nothing. She looked out for everybody how she could, as much as she could, y'all. Milwaukee police had much of the intersection taped off this morning. Investigators say the shooting stemmed from an argument. Family members claim that was not the case. We thought it was a truck, you know, that, you know, hit on the concrete and stuff. It wasn't a truck. I said, no, nah, something ain't right. Jermaine McAdory says he was close by when the shooting happened. Another neighbor says off camera that she heard it too, but chalked it up to construction. They all quickly realized the reality was more tragic. I made the 20th uh, in, in Clark right there. And police are just flying everywhere. Tanelia was surrounded by grieving family and friends at the scene. Her grandmother, who she is named after, was overcome with emotion, pleading for answers. It's up y'all behind and feel my daughter, man. There's so much violence going on. Y'all didn't put them guns down. There's too much hatred out here in this world. And it doesn't appear that homes in the area have any cameras pointed in this direction. Now, MPD says it is still searching for an unknown suspect. If you have any information that can help investigators, contact police or Crime Stoppers. At 6.03 is your time right now. This one of the Milwaukee police officer 
is in the hospital after he was hit by a squad car during a police pursuit. The chase started near 107th in Good Hope during an attempted traffic stop on Saturday afternoon. And Sydney joins us live this morning from police headquarters with what led up to the incident. Sydney, good morning. Good morning. If you were sitting in traffic on Saturday on I-94, you were probably slowly driving by trying to figure out what had happened. Well, our crews were on the scene and police tell us that a police officer was hit by a squad car when he was trying to lay out some stop sticks on the road. It Damn. happened shortly after four on Saturday when Milwaukee police chased a suspect to the area near 37th and Park Hill. We're told officers believe the person they were chasing was connected to a shooting and a carjacking. Officers so they were chasing some sudden turd who had carjacked and shot somebody. Listen, man, these chases, man, yo, you got to make that shit like a big crime. Yo, if you run from the cops and you take us on a police chase throughout the fucking city, yo, you get time for that even if you beat the other case. Even if you got Johnny Cochran and they fuck, he beat the murder, he beat the carjacking and then the shooting, you still got to do 10 years for fucking risking everybody in the city who's on the streets lives and all our officers lives by taking us on a high speed chase that's where gliders miss it you right uh, they throw that charge out i've been i've been been around man when they throw that charge out immediately when you get to court and you start negotiating or whatever or, or cop a plea or something like that they they throw the fleeing arrest eluding arrest they throw that out and they just charge you with the other shit. You right, but do you know what gliders did though? So they created a um uh this thing that shoots from the cops car and it sticks onto the 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 car that's running away, and then they can just track it that way instead of actually chasing them now. So instead of doing what you're talking about doing, they actually made some technology to um to negate having to chase the cars now. With an apple, they they put an apple. <laughs> no, nah, it's like the, it shoots from the from the cops' car, like from their like license plates or the other or the front, the front of the car, uh -huh. and, it, and it sticks onto their um onto their car. And Man, that's like Batman. Don't they have to be yeah. close to a car to do that though? <clears throat> Probably. Yeah. It's, it, it was on, it's on Twitter. They're trying it out in a couple of um, couple of states yeah. already. They also have ways to grab the car too if they get close. Yeah, that to too. Them. Yeah, they had that. Yeah, but you're talking about that don't work when you're dealing with reckless people that's driving. Like, they chasing people that uh, do 10 years in jail like it's like eating a fucking bag of chips and shit. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm just, instead of them actually trying to put them, into, um, put them in jail longer, they're, they're like, fuck it, we'll just try to make something so we don't so we can try to um, not chase them no more. So they can run away. And when once they park, we'll come and go get you. But by that what time, if it's a stolen late. car? Exactly, what if it's a stolen exactly. car? Exactly. And what if they, and then and then you got to deal with the whole, oh, I, I didn't have my car. Somebody stole my car. It's like, it's a, it, that stuff, that stuff works in principle, but it don't work. It wasn't made with us in mind. Of tried course. conducting a traffic stop, but the car drove off and that chase began. One officer was putting down those stop sticks near 37th along I-94 when the fleeing vehicle jumped the median. The officer putting down those stop sticks was able to move out of the way, but that but was struck by the squad car chasing the suspect. Neighbors that live in the area heard it all happen just outside. The police car started going. I mean, he was about nine, like nine, ten. Oh, that's a share. It would be a wonder we didn't take out five or six cars. I don't know when they should chase him, when they shouldn't. Only it just seems um, like in the city, no, because you got too many pedestrians. The officer. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, it's tough, man. Um, it's a tough thing, but. Uh, I'll tell you, though, man. They talk about black names and it's like, oh, but they, you know, that whole test they do. It's like, but have you ever seen like a Dr. Shaniqua? 
Has anybody ever heard? Like, could you imagine? Like, if I was in a fucking hospital with the way affirmative action is these uh, days. Oh man, who served time in prison for burglaries? <laughs> Yo, if, if I was if I was in a hospital with the way this shit works now. They put me in room 3F with appendicitis. They'd be like, paging Dr. Shanique with a 3F. I'd be like, actually, I feel real good now. You know, right. I, I feel fine. And then she'd bust in the room with a fucking chainsaw. We got to get that appendix out. And I would just be like, oh, fuck, I'm dead. Your doctor Dr. got got three-inch nails and shit. And yeah, three out. Eyelashes yeah. and fake eyelashes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, do me a favor. Do me a favor, okay? Can you finish the surgery first and then start twerking while I'm while I'm unconscious? What are you doing about New City? New at noon, we're hearing from the 75-year-old woman who was attacked in the elevator of their building in the Bronx. The suspect was out on parole after an attempted murder conviction back in 2012. Now, the victim is still in the hospital, but spoke a short time ago with Eyewitness News reporter Kimberly Richardson, and she's live at the scene in the Fordham section with that conversation. Kimberly. Well, David, Zanona Ramos is in pain. Her hands and face are covered with stab wounds. In fact, she needed 40 stitches in one hand to close those cuts. At one point, she tells me, while here in this building, in the elevator with the suspect, she begged him to let her live, telling him she has a family. The great-grandmother is in the hospital right now. She is in stable condition, but she is terrified. It was Sunday morning around 1130 at our apartment building on Morris Avenue. Avenue in the Bronx when all of this happened. An exclusive video obtained by Eyewitness News, you see Ramos walk in the front door of the building. Seconds later, the suspect, Edwin Rios, hey. he trails behind her. The pair ends up in the elevator together, and before the doors even closed, Rios repeatedly stabbed the victim. There was no way out, and she was trying to block the blows, but she couldn't. Covered with blood, Ramos gets off the elevator on the first floor. She doesn't live on that floor but she got off. She walked down the hallway and started banging on a neighbor's door for help. That woman called 911. The suspect then casually walks off the elevator down the stairs and exits the building. He also was covered with blood. He was arrested by phone from her hospital. Wow. Ramos, walk me through this terrifying ordeal. Y as I got in without saying a word, he started punching and stabbing me. I was trapped in the elevator. I have diabetes, was operated on. He opened up all my wounds. He cut me. I have 40 stitches in my hand. Now, as for Ramos, she has six children. She has about 11 grandchildren and one great grand. As for the woman who called 911, she tells me she heard Ramos banging on the door, asking for help. She cracked her door just a little bit. She could not believe what she saw. Ramos covered with blood. She called 911. We'll have much more in this story coming up later on Eyewitness News. For now, we're live in the Bronx. Kimberly Richardson, Channel 7. Eyewitness News. Our Houston police are searching for answers after a man was found dead in the parking lot of his apartment complex. Yeah, police say this happened last night on Summer Street while the man was walking his dog. KHU 11's Jalissa Garza joins us outside the apartment complex tonight with how neighbors are feeling about what happened here. Jalissa? Yeah, well, Houston police say they were dispatched to a call here at the co-op apartment complex on Summer Street. They say the victim now identified by the Harris County Medical Examiner as Christensen Marcus Keith Hill was with his dog when all of this happened. And as we saw today, there are a lot of people in the area who have dogs, some of them now worried going forward. Too shaken up to go on camera, but still willing to speak. Amy describes what she heard Sunday night just before 11. What I thought was just like a trailer going over bumps because I'm unfamiliar with gunshots, right? Um, and then I got a text from one of my friends just saying, did you hear the gunshots? And Amy lives in the apartment complex next to where Houston police say they found a 23-year-old man with multiple gunshot wounds. And people started coming out to find out what was going on. From According to police, the victim, identified by the Harris County Medical Examiner as Christensen Marcus Keith Hill, was a resident here, and they say he... Marcus Keith Hill, that's a brother. He was with his dog near a car when approached by two unknown males. Then gunshots were heard. 
Police say the suspect stole a dark gray four-door Cadillac the victim was known to drive. And then the only thing I saw was a gray gray car, a sedan just come out this gate and that was it. Surveillance video provided by a person who lives in the townhomes that are part of the complex shows investigators taking pictures of a fence where it appears bullet holes could have gone through. It, it does worry me um, for sure. Um, I think all the neighbors are, are concerned and, and we just kind of want to find out what happens. Amy is not the only one in the area who feels that way. Lauren Tran lives in the apartment complex where the victim was found and came home to a parking lot full of police cars. Like I couldn't even get into my house, which is very crazy. She walks her dog daily and is now hoping for some security. But in the meantime, plans to change the times she takes her dog out. I'm probably going to take my dog out before nine. I would like probably watch others take out their dogs and then just kind of unfollow them. Try to Lauren and others we spoke to off camera tell me they have yet to hear from the apartment complex and are hoping to soon. We did reach out to the property management, but have not heard anything yet. Live in Houston, Jalissa Garza, KHOU 11 News. Tragic and scary. Jalissa, thank you. Father-son duo faces multiple charges after Memphis police say they stole several cars and changed their appearance to sell at a chop shop. Detectives also found three malnourished pit bulls chained to cars with no food or shelter. WREG's Shea Simon is live downtown. And Shea, what is the very latest on this? Yeah, April, Alex, this was a pretty major bus. Cars and car parts just scattered all across this lot. And these cars were stolen from all over, from Tennessee to Mississippi. No sign, no visible building, but police say this is the home of CNM Tillyard on 3rd Street. Police say father-son duo Marvin Hilliard and Marvin Hilliard Jr. used this location as a chop shop. From November 2020 to November 2023, investigators say the two allegedly stole eight vehicles, totaling more than $370,000. It's part of a bigger problem. WREG investigators uncovered that last year, there were 35 to 45 cars stolen a day in Memphis, nearly 22,000 vehicle thefts in two years. The debilitating effect that a stolen vehicle has to a family or a person that's working every day is very serious. MPD Interim Police Chief C.J. Davis says MPD created the Auto Theft Task Force to track where vehicles are recovered. That task force busted this father and son, allegedly with cars stolen from Memphis to Nashville to Greenville, Mississippi and Tunica, Mississippi. Though the gates are locked now, investigators say the owner of a 2014 no, Chrysler. Yeah, me either. They at least they not joyriding this shit. Yeah, yeah. They just they doing something. What they 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 stealing these people's cars, and they're gonna go to jail for making a business out of it, not joyriding. Exactly. Mm, mm, mm. Hey. Rough out here in this field, man. Well, right now, thousands of young people are in downtown Indianapolis learning about the agricultural industry. That's right. They're here for the National FFA Convention happening at Lucas Oil Stadium in the Convention Center. This Somebody told me about this because there was a mass shooting in um, Indianapolis last night where a bunch of black kids got shot. And it was like, yeah, they had the farmers <laughs> convention down there in Indianapolis. It, 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 nothing happened. Not one fight. Is a huge deal every year. More than 7,000 students are here to learn there's much more to agriculture and the industry than farming. Yeah, it's a billion dollar industry. Mm -hmm. So they're learning about technology, science, and a whole lot more. I think sometimes the stereotypes of what we think agriculture is is being boring, old, and dirty. They realize it's exciting, it's, it's has science, it, it gives you an opportunity to do something that's hands on. So it's, it takes the classroom and makes it real. And so I think that's one of the reasons we have so many students around the country who choose to get involved in ag education. Oh, and they always look nice in their mm -hmm. blazers and sweaters. FFA is also trying to encourage more young people, especially minority students, to get involved. It's impressive how many students are involved with FFA. Why? Every year all over the Why? Country. Well, right now, downtown India is filled with thousands of young people who have an interest in agriculture. They're all attending the National FFA Convention. We've got our Karen Campbell joining us live downtown where the fun continues. I'll bet you've seen a few blue jackets, haven't you, Karen? 
Uh, Scott, I, I've seen so many blue jackets. Like these students behind me are from, you said Texas? And Florida, from Florida. all the way from Florida, and we have students from all over the country and New Jersey, all here descending in downtown Indiana Convention Center, learning everything they can about agriculture. And the goal is to, of course, uh, educate these young folks because we need them uh, to be the future, right, of, of the agricultural field. So we talked to a couple of students today and uh, take a listen, check this out, hear what they had to say. It was a sea of blue outside Lucas Oil Stadium Wednesday. Students like Jaywan Sloan from Arkansas is among more than 7,000 here for the FFA convention. Now well, 7,000 kids and they talked to the one black kid and black people talk about we ain't represented. We don't get the same attention. <laughs> Probably 1% of the population in there. Like. Yeah, man, they talk to one black kid. They ain't asked none of them white kids no questions, man. I'm one of the non-traditional students, but uh, jumping into the classroom. Just among more than 7,000 here for the FFA convention. And I was kind of one of the non-traditional students, but uh, jumping into the classroom just gave me those experiences and learning about the farm and everything. One of the goals of the FFA has been to increase minority representation. So actually, I was one of those students coming into ag. I was like, I do not want to get my hands dirty or I don't want to wake up that early because I'm not a morning person whatsoever. His thoughts later changed. Some man going to be in the absolute world and that can take you so far in life. Students also got the chance to tour Indy and spend some time at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Ag leaders drove home other opportunities in this. See now what's going to happen is he going to get in there. He seemed like a good kid, but other black kids going to get in there and they going to talk about racism. And next thing you know, all these people here are going to be fucking racist and shit. If you listen, he said, I'm not the typical student. That's yeah. That's serious though. You already said it. This girl Man. right here gonna be a racist. This girl gonna be a racist. He gonna be a racist. They gonna be like, what? Like, yeah, you're racist now because black people are here. <laughs> they found out of all the students, they found black Poindexter. He the only one would be down there. Yeah, he is the only one. Regular black people not. They don't do shit like this, bro. No, fuck no. We don't gravitate towards anything like this and. Well, and this is science. No this is like no science too. On, like, man. nah, bro. Yeah, man. This is this is this is this is just we'll ruin this too, man. We all, all these people to be racist. We gonna need a special whatever test they take. They gonna have to make the test. We gonna say the test bias. And shit, yeah. If your crops don't grow, it's gonna be because of black magic. Yeah, it's just shit, man. man. Let these white people have their shit. Why we always gotta fuck right. fuck with white people, man? Um, salute, man. Great show. Same black time, same black channel. Ah, out of here. Peace out. Hey.